Hi guys, it is an absolutely gorgeous Monday morning here in the end times in St. Croix Virgin Islands. I have found myself at a place where I'm definitely going to be doing shrooms here the next full moon at Estate Mount Washington. This was a cotton plantation built in 1750 then was a sugar plantation for 150 years. It was a rum distillery for 80 years. The great house was built in 1779, abandoned in 1899, and restored in 1985. And these very nice folks, there's their great house up there on the hill. And these very nice rich folks have just uh, opened their front yard to uh, anybody here, to the public. It doesn't cost you one penny. So you can come walk across around their front yard and the main uh, attraction here is the labyrinth. We're gonna end up in the labyrinth. And I wanna start here under, Just it, I just can't wait till I'm shrooming here, guys. We're gonna start under the, we're wondering if this was the hanging tree. Don't know if they ever hung people from here, but now it's the... That's all that's hanging here now. It's absolutely gorgeous here. And we're heading to the dungeon. Can't really see the the great house that's so this is where the plantation owner lived up in the top and that house was built in 1779 so that's where the where the owner lived and this is where the slaves lived the workers you see the bars on the doors they, they now call it the the dungeon so this is good lord over 250 years old. You wonder how many uh, how many people were crammed into here. You see still I don't know what I don't even want to know what this manacle is. And I guess that was their light. So this is where these slaves who Ran this. Good Lord. Can you imagine when I'm shrooming? When, uh, what I'm gonna find in the dungeon. So I don't even, no telling what all this was. So we're gonna, before we get to the labyrinth, head up here to the and hitting this badass. Oh, bring on the shrooms. So I don't know what they boiled in here. I guess this had something to do with where they boiled the sugar cane syrup. In here, they sure did like the use of arches. winding through. I just love the... This is... I love this. Can you imagine being on shrooms here, guys? We're heading into the tunnel to crushing machinery. The tunnel to crushing machinery. Yes, we are. We are in the tunnel, don't you love it, Mother Nature, taking advantage of the cracks in global industrial civilization. This tunnel, I guess, is 250 years old. And here is the crushing machinery. So uh, I'm assuming what they did is they, is they crushed the sugar cane between these giant rollers. 
see these cogs so they ran the cane through here and uh, I guess it poured out of here and through this uh, hollowed out log and then they boiled it down in those big pots there's the great house on the hill the great house on the hill is the tunnel out of the crushing machinery. I've got to get a picture of your old doomsday prophet cheering on the collapse of industrial civilization here in front of the crushing machinery. So I'm going to head down to the labyrinth. The labyrinth. Um, here's the here's the map in the history. This is the cockpit animal sugar mill. I'm not going to bother reading the whole history of what this place used to look like. This is what it used to look like when the roofs were on and everything. We are going to instead head to the labyrinth. I didn't know what people were talking about when they were telling me about this labyrinth. I was expecting some maze of bushes or something. But no, this is a very cool thing and anyone could build one of these. And I'm thinking of building one myself. And cannot wait to run the labyrinth and my uh, mushroom sharpened brain. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the history of the labyrinth. Walking the labyrinth, the ancient winding pathway of various labyrinths have been found throughout the world. Two types of labyrinths are in use today. And the Chartreuse Labyrinth and the Classical Labyrinth. And I think that they have it set out in the Chartreuse Labyrinth formation at present. I guess they move them around. Walking the labyrinth unifies body, mind, and spirit. The physical movement along with the mind activity seem to bring the three into wholeness. Walking the labyrinth brings action to our thought, so our prayers are set in motion. We are inspired to surrender by this action, and in so doing, we release our limited thought and allow the immeasurable possibility of God to heal our lives. There are three parts to a labyrinth walk. Walking the pathway to the center may serve as a time for release and quieting the mind. And we'll see with mushrooms crashing through my brain if this is true or not. The time spent in the center is a time for thoughtfulness prayer and openness to receive walking the pathway out is a time for giving thanks and for union with the healing power of God blessings on your journey so we are now going to journey into the labyrinth and back out again and as I Hey, I look forward to doing this in the under the blessing of the mushroom god. So here we have a fellow walking the labyrinth. And I'm going to head in and I don't know if we're going to meet somewhere in the middle or not. So what they just all this is made out of guys is just little rocks, just little river rocks. I mean the size of the palm of your hand. I mean, you could use anything. But, so this thing is, I'm guessing, 
maybe 40 feet in diameter, maybe 50 feet. I call it a 25 foot radius. And I'm sure you can find the patterns of these things. So you'll need a, about a, to, to do one like this, you would need about a 50 by 50 foot level piece of lawn and about, I'm guessing about three cubic yards of palm-sized river rock, although you can just choose what you want to make this out of. So we're going to head into the labyrinth. There's my feet. I am walking into the labyrinth. I've already had my first head-on collision in the labyrinth. <laughs> Keep to the left, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the second day in a row I have walked of the labyrinth. <coughs> yes, this is going to be a, an entirely different experience on psilocybin mushrooms. So they've incorporated seashells, brain coral. Uh, so I see what they've done. They, they have a heavy matting of uh, wood chips to keep the weeds from growing through. And I've also seen a smaller version of this with, uh, with an organic garden out in, uh, out in Oregon. These folks have actually planted lettuce they did this with lettuce when it was very cool so you were actually walking through a lettuce labyrinth so that's another idea Whee! so I don't know how many feet this comes out to within the 50 foot diameter Pretty gorgeous. This is the, the view as you walk deeper into the labyrinth. Must be nice to be rich. But as long as you are rich, you might as well be a nice rich person and do something like this and open it to the world. Uh, I've been in St. Croix for a little over a month. I remember when I mentioned coming here that somebody here in the tribe, I think it was cute cat Faith talking about how her friends came to St. Croix and were bored because there was nothing to do here. Obviously her friend did not find the labyrinth. I have not been bored one time in St. Croix, Virgin Islands, and it is the most gorgeous weather I have ever found in 55 years of searching. Every single day, high 82, low 68, every single day since I've been here. Good Lord, how many places in this in St. Croix to do mushrooms? It's got to be a mushroom capital. Okay, we have arrived in the center of the labyrinth, where we have the shell on top of the brain coral. Can you imagine what this is going to look like on shrooms? The brain coral. I can only imagine what that is going to look like on psilocybin mushrooms. Alright. This is your old doomsday tourist. 
on a Monday morning in the end times in St. Croix looking forward to his upcoming mushroom trip in the full moon in the labyrinth. Bye guys.